In a prison in Seattle, the color pink was used as mind control. How does this make you feel? Does it make you feel passive? Make a fist. Does it feel weak? Drunk tank pink, passive pink, cool down pink, Baker Miller pink, P618, whatever you call it. The idea that pink might make you weak is actually science. Kinda. So in the 1960s, the scientist Alexander Schaus wanted to find out if colors could affect the way you felt. He was a believer in this German theory that you could use the colors people chose as a way to understand their inner mental state. And he wanted to see if he could reverse it, if he could basically make you feel things by showing you certain colors. And he came across one shade that was special. So he got 153 volunteers and he had them hold out their arms in front of them and he showed them either a blue piece of cardboard or a pink piece of cardboard. And he had a volunteer push their hands down as hard as he could. 151 of 153 people were weaker when they were looking at the pink. He also tested this with slightly more scientific methods of having people use a hand grippy thing that tested how hard they gripped. He found a loss of strength between six and 23%. It had effects on people's cardiovascular system. They calmed down. So he started talking about this at one of his talks. Uh, two guys, Baker and Miller, saw his presentation. They happened to run a prison. This is actually a naval prison. And then they said, hey, what if we paint the drunk tank pink? That's what they did. So the Navy's report was that uh, since undertaking this experiment on March 1st, 1979, there have been no incidents of erratic or violent behavior during the confinement. And if you've ever wondered uh, what to do with a drunken sailor, what to do with a drunken sailor, what to do with a drunken sailor, put him in a pink room. As far as they were concerned, it was a huge success. And this caught on. Penal systems around the country began painting their rooms pink. San Bernardino in California painted their juvenile detention center pink and said they actually couldn't leave the, the delinquents in there for too long or they'd become too weak. And the power of pink became one of these well-known truths. About 10 years later in 1988, some scientists tried to replicate the results and they couldn't do it. They could not show any measurable differences in grip strength, in heart rate, it was a wash. But the cat was out of the bag. To this day, prison systems are still experimenting with Baker Miller pink. Switzerland just painted parts of eight different prisons this shade of, of pink. Well, the science on this remains pretty sketchy. Uses for Baker Miller pink have been proposed from uh, corporate break rooms to the inside of ambulances, panic rooms, airport security, or mental uh, facilities for catastrophe areas like natural disaster relief areas. Regardless of the science behind it, for modern day prisons, the color of control is pink. Bright bubblegum pink. The pinkest pink you can pink. Click here to subscribe or click here to watch our other videos. I mean, th there's an irony in this too, which is that our cultural associations with pink are new. In the turn of the century, pink was the uh, traditional boy's color. Like what if it's true and pink actually creates passivity and it has been thrust upon the women of the world as a way to make them uh, docile consumers of, of home goods and dolls. Our daughters are being brainwashed by pink.